going to tell you a story uh, of how I managed to buy not one but two uh, new Smiths Everest PRS25, two different dials. I managed to get a uh, honeycomb dial and a gilt dial and I'm going to tell you all about how you can get one, if they're worth the hype and also uh, while getting uh, rid of one of them. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to talk you through my story at least. For me, when I first saw the honeycomb in person, one of my friends has it, I fell in love straight away. And knowing the hype about the watch and how difficult it is to get, my thought process was, I wanna have at least one Everest. And then obviously, ideally it would be the honeycomb. But since in uh, this year's and last year's releases, the honeycomb was the last set of watches that were being released. And so the first one was the black dial. I tried, I failed miserably. I didn't even get to put in my banking details before the shop was closed already very frustrating experience so then I moved on to uh, try and think okay what can I do to prepare myself more I created an account and put in all of my details next thing you know I managed to get the guild dial now hear me out the guild dial it looks amazing on the photos and it also does in real life but there was one thing you know one thing when you when you buy something that you're really looking forward to, but you open it up for the first time and you see it in person and the first thing, the first kind of reaction that you have, there's something that's kind of off. But given the excitement that I had, I just didn't want to accept that there was something that was off with the watch. So I kind of brushed over it, but I knew immediately what it was. And what it was is that for me, a gilt dial doesn't work with a sunburst uh, dial like that combination just doesn't work in addition to that the loom the loom of the gilt dial is a bit too kind of off-white it's neon and given that you already have golden markers and indices you have that golden detail there's just a combination that doesn't work um, I think if, if the dial was matte black and you'd have the gilt hands and indices that would be the perfect combination but then again the loom has something off now hear me out despite all of this i started falling in love with the watch especially when i put it on the omega nato strap on the bond strap it works incredibly well uh, with 36 millimeters it doesn't sit large on the wrist not even with the nato strap and it looks amazing like it's it's such a good casual time only look like i mean look at it um so i started actually falling in love with it when the time came to try and buy the honeycomb and so i did my best to get the honeycomb and i mean as you could imagine by the title of this video i managed to get it so I got the honeycomb, it's been on my wrist for just a week now and I mean what can you say, it's it's exactly what I wanted and what I expected and so yes, I'm gonna get rid of the guild dial and I'm gonna stay with the honeycomb. That being said, it doesn't mean that it will be easy to part with the guild dial. The guild dial, even though from the beginning there was something that was putting me off, at the end of the day I was kind of getting attached to it it is looking really good on the NATO strap, even with those elements that I don't like. And so um, whoever will have this next will, uh, I'm sure, enjoy it to the fullest as it deserves to be enjoyed. Just a quick intermission. If you are enjoying this video, then please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you enjoy our content and leave a thought down below in the comments. We always like to discuss watches. Back to Nearly's video. But let's talk about the brand itself and the whole experience that is well not so not so great i don't really enjoy how the website works how the system works that the shop opens on a sunday and so on i do understand that you know the demand is obviously huge and it's a small management so it is difficult to uh to provide a great experience for everyone because if you're not going to get the watch the experience is already not going to be great but that aside if you actually do manage to get the watch they are shipped by ups and UPS is absolutely horrible. I don't know how it is in other countries and I don't like slacking off companies when there's no need to, but UPS is really, it's such a poor quality service in the UK at least. Um, the, the, the exact same 
thing happened two or three times and even it happened to other people because I, I went on to read reviews they essentially tell you that your watch is there and then uh, and that they attempted a delivery when in reality they never even attempted which is really frustrating you know if you're paying good money uh, for for an item that you're waiting um, it, it's a bit of a bad experience so I'm not sure why they use UPS uh, it has nothing to do really with the brand itself but that is an element that I want to make you aware of now the other element is the brand itself this is obviously a homage watch the Smiths Everest as such as as we see it here never really existed there was a there was obviously a, a Everest watch that didn't look like this. This pays homage to the Explorer that was sent up Mount Everest, up the sum summit of Mount Everest, which was, I believe, based on an Oyster uh, case. It wasn't called an Explorer yet. Rolex was, as ever, better in marketing than anyone else, and they were the first to kind of capitalize on this. Um, and Smith's kind of now... Um, takes back some of that history in creating a homage that is very attractive that comes in many different dials uh, including the gilt the black the honeycomb and i think there's even a white dial and out of those dials i've only seen two it's the gilt and the honeycomb i've only seen two in person and i have to say the honeycomb is just incredible the texture you don't see the honeycomb in all the lights if if the light is not very high it just seems like a black dial but then you t tilt it a bit and and the honeycomb just appears it's in your face and it's beautiful the the cream color of the indices the fortina it just works perfectly there's nothing that is off and this new set of watches come with a jubilee bracelet that is actually quite decent quality for the price and with an engraved case back with the summit of mount Everest. and i think that's a really really nice touch for the money so to wrap it up is this watch worth it let's consider that we have a myota movement we have uh, 20,000 uh, gauss of magnetic resistance we have 100 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown we have a hacking movement we have a really decent case design that I mean it's essentially a 36 millimeter oyster case yes Yes, it's worth it. It's a scratch resistant sapphire crystal. I don't know, I could go on and on. And I don't know if you can hear the sirens. Again, we're in London, apologies. Um, but yeah, it is it is worth it. Um, so I do suggest if you, if you do like it, try and get it. I know it can be frustrating, but it's worth the wait. It's worth the pain. So um, yeah, that's my take at least. Uh, I will be selling this very soon. Uh, if you're interested, slip in my DMs. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please do make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this type of content. Thank you so much. Take care. See you next time. Ciao.